thank you for joining us. We hope you're enjoying the programming here on WBGU-TV Public Television. In just a moment, we're going to be going to the kitchen where Tina Simon and four guys are going to be preparing some wonderful recipes in our continuation of a series called WBGU Cooks. And in this case, it's WBGU Cooks Grub by Guy. So we've got four great recipes coming up, and there'll be opportunities for you to show your support for the program as well. So let's go to the kitchen and our host, Tina Simon, for WBGU Cooks Grub by Guys. I'm joined today with Eric Mathis. He's one of our students here at WBGU TV. And Eric is going to cook fall off the bone ribs. Fall off the bone ribs, that's yes. right. Yep. Awesome. Okay, so what are we going to do with the fall off the bone ribs? Uh, the thing with the ribs is a lot of people like to grill them. Uh, this, we're going to boil them first to get the marinade deep in there. Okay. okay, and this is what's going to set up the fall off the bone part. Okay, and just so people know, this is a process. So it's not like you're just going to put this together in an hour, you're going to have ribs. Yep, it's a three step process. It's going to be the marinade, the dry rub, and the grill. So it should take about four hours. Okay, so what first part is marinade. First right? part is the marinade. So what do we have going into the marinade? All right, we've got uh, t one tablespoon of lime juice, quarter cup of soy sauce half cup of hot sauce, half cup of olive oil, one cup of vinegar, and one cup of Italian dressing, and with some water to dilute it. Okay, so question. Yes. Somebody that does not like hot, hot, hot. <laughs> right. Is there, is this, do you know yeah, this? Is you it could, spicy? Is it? You're the chef, you can opt out of anything. So if you don't this like it spicy. True. This is true. If you don't like it spicy, you can put something else in there. Um, maybe put another cup of Italian dressing, maybe try some Greek dressing. Or if you cut down, just yep. don't put as much in. Yep. Now I did notice on your recipe, Greek dressing. I, what's, what's the difference between uh, Greek and Italian dressing? Is it, it adds a little bit more different, different flavor in okay. there. Okay, okay. All right, so we're just gonna pour all this in We're gonna pour it all in and mix it up. And and so you call it a marinade, but you're not marinating it per se. You're marinating it in the oven. It's a hot marinade. Okay, yeah, that's a good way so to put it. So here's the uh, one tablespoon of lime juice. Okay. Soy sauce. And and I must say, you are from from Eastern North Carolina. So when we get to the vinegar. That's the part of Eastern North Carolina barbecue that I'm mixing. So in. you are an expert on barbecue. I'm an expert <laughs> on barbecue. Uh, just by being from North Carolina doesn't make me an expert. Oh, but okay, I thought I'll say so. <laughs> okay. So here comes the vinegar. Uh, this is what this is what the bone marrow is going to soak up, and it's going to add to the marinade. Okay. So vin it, you said the difference between this kind of barbecue is the vinegar. It's a more vinegar mm -hmm. than now. Have you always, is, is this your specialty? Do you cook a lot? Is this something that you've, you love to uh, do? This is, is something it? I've kind of just whipped up together. Um, I used to just grill ribs and then, you know, they kind of get a little dry. So I tried, yes. decided to try something new. And this is, so this is your, you created this recipe. I did, I did, yep. Mm, that's I mean, I'm not the only one that's boiling ribs, but yeah, yeah but it's my still, own little special thing. That's pretty impressive. So do you cook other things or do you like to cook or? Uh, top ramen. <laughs> Is that all right? <laughs> mm, well, <laughs> uh, I guess. Can you pass me the water? I guess. We can add the, water. the other thing is, I was we were commenting on the ribs. There's all kinds of different ribs that you can get out there, but the baby back are the best. I mean, they're a little bit more expensive, but <clears throat> I, I like to get them on sale and I put them in the freezer and because there's nothing like the baby back ribs. Yep. So now I'm just going to mix everything up in there, make sure I've got the marinade all over the ribs. Now when we put this in the oven, we're going to be turning this, right, to make sure... Yep, we're going to flip them multiple times. How long does... Oh, okay, how long does this boil, uh, it's marinade gonna, boil? It's going to marinate for three hours, so you're going to be flipping it every 30 minutes. Oh, okay. So now um, we're going to cover it. Okay, go ahead. We're going to cover it, keep all the steam in. Now, before we put those in, I just also wanted to comment, you're military, mm -hmm. right? Yep. You were in I was a Marine for five years. Marine. Yep. And now you've come back to school mm -hmm. and you're studying... Sport management. Sports management. Yep. So, But you, for us, you do social media, yeah, right? Yeah, social you're media. You're our social media guy. So um, did you have to learn to... Did you cook for the guys when you were in... Uh, we barbecued every once in a while. I never tried this recipe, but yeah, we... 
We barbecued you, every once in a while. Were you overseas? I was. Uh, I did a year in Afghanistan. Uh, we didn't eat too many meals ready to eat, but uh, it wasn't. We never got to eat ribs like this. Though. Probably the one thing yeah. you wanted when you got back home. Well, we appreciate your service. Thank you. I will say that for everyone out there. So we're going to go ahead and put those in the the oven. We're going to put it in the oven uh, for three hours at 350 degrees. Okay. And you're going to be flipping it every 30 minutes. Every 30 minutes. So you got to set your timer. 30 minutes. Now we're boiling. Okay, now we have taken our ribs and we have cooked them for three hours in our marinade, turned them every 30 minutes, and now we're ready for the next step. Yep, the key was uh, keeping them moist in the oven. Uh, so now we've got it ready for the dry rub. Now you've just boiled these ribs and you wanna get, you wanna get the moisture out. So that's the key to the dry rub. So and you're gonna take it. What do we have in the dry rub there? You've got a little bit of uh, Cajun seasoning, Italian seasoning, Greek seasoning, and uh, Cajun pepper. Mix in with a little bit of pink Himalayan sea salt. And that pink Himalayan sea salt, it's got a lot of uh, na natural health benefits. So you're gonna rub it all down on the front side, the big meaty portion, then you're gonna flip it over to the bone side. You're gonna grab some of your rub, sprinkle it on. Now, what were those seasonings again? Greek, I don't think I've ever heard of Greek seasoning. Greek, Greek? seasoning, uh, it's got a little bit less parsley than Italian seasoning. Okay. So you're gonna, the key is to get it all in the meaty portions in between the ribs. It smells awesome. Okay, so we've got our dry rub on already. Uh, now we're gonna go ahead and prepare our barbecue sauce. Uh, in our barbecue sauce is gonna be uh, some maple syrup and some honey. And you ha already have store-bought yep. barbecue syrup. We got syrup some just uh, Casey Masterpiece barbecue sauce in here. And you're gonna doctor it up with your own yep. more sweet. It's gonna it turn into a molasses, really. So you add that honey in there and make it thick. Stir it on up good. That does make it extra thick, doesn't it? It does. The barbecue sauce is uh, a little too thin from the store. So you had a had how much barbecue sauce did you have in there? That I'm using a cup of barbecue sauce, but it's really all up to you of how much you want to keep it. Okay. And uh, we put the dry rub on, and there's another step after that. Yep. Uh, we're going to take it out to the grill. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put our uh, molasses sauce on the grill. How long do you grill it then? Uh, I like to sear the dry rub on and then uh, add the molasses. I flip it uh, about three times, takes about 10 minutes. Now your grill, do you use a gas grill or do you use the real, the real stuff? I use uh, coals, a barbecue from, uh, from the uh, store. Okay. Um, I like to get the coals going. You wanna make sure you get all the match light out if you're using match light coals. So um, that has to, how long does that have to take then? Uh, to it takes a good 30 minutes to get it going because you don't want uh, the match light keep keeping uh, lighting up while uh, the coals are getting hot. You want them all to be gray. And so do you put anything down on the grill or it's just put the ribs right just down Just put the there? ribs right on. I like to use an onion to, uh, mm. to clean off the grill surface beforehand. Oh, gives uh, it a little bit of extra flavoring. Yep. And the, the acid kills off a lot of the bacteria that was on the, on the grill. And mm. you've already got it hot and it uh, sizzles on there. So Tina, we're back here in the kitchen uh, with our ribs and the, they're falling off the bone here after grilling them. Yeah, nice caramelized barbecue sauce. And we cooked these for about 15 minutes on the grill. And as you cooked them, you were turning them and you kept putting barbecue sauce yep. on them. The key is to keep them, uh, keep them moist the whole way through uh, from boiling all the way to grilling. Well, they look awesome. Can't wait to try them. So make sure you come back. Thank you again for being with Thank us, you. Eric. And we will have more great recipes on Grub by Guys. Thanks, Tina and Eric. And we'll be right back to the kitchen for another great recipe here on WBGU Cooks, Grub by Guys, uh, another edition in the long series of WBGU Cooks. And of course, one of the things that we do is ask you to support programs like WBGU Cooks and all the other great programs you see here on WBGU TV. So whether it's Scenic Stops, Northwest Ohio Journal, BG on TV, BGSU Brain Game, those are all supported by you underwriting and sending in uh, donations and pledges to support great local programs 
programming and also help us acquire the national programs you see like Nova, Nature, Frontline, Antiques Roadshow, Washington Week, uh, the Fall uh, Arts Festival that you see on Friday nights here on WBGUT Public TV. Now, one of the ways you can particularly support WBGU Cooks is to take advantage uh, by pledging and receiving some of our wonderful thank you gifts. Jane? Yes, exactly. Um, we have several different levels, and the Chef's Recipe Cards come with a gift of $40 to WBGU TV. And then for a gift of $60, you get the recipe cards and the uh, tailgate cookbook, which is a, a lot of nice recipes from the area. And then for a gift of $100, you get the recipe book, the cards, and the membership card. And mm -hmm. this is really something it's to have. It's fantastic. A lot, it really of, is. lot of different incentives mm -hmm. and benefits, two-for-one deals at local restaurants and in, in the area. And then for a gift of two fifty, you get ten cookbooks and all of the above. That's right. So it's so a, a, lot, it's a, a lot of items. It's a great package, and of course, all of those cookbooks have recipes from all over Northwest Ohio. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, people who live here have sent in recipes, and those have been on some of the other WBGU Cooks programs. So you can kind of sample cuisine, everything from uh, entrees, desserts to. Uh, appetizers, uh, even some uh, you know types of drinks and things like that. So kind exactly. of some neat things mm -hmm. from all over towns and cities, uh, the area names of Northwest that. and West Central Ohio. So that's kind of a neat thing. And of course, if you if you get the 10 cookbooks, you pretty much have been able to try the cuisine, cuisine from the entire area by getting those 10 cookbooks. Keep in mind too that every pledge of $100 and above receives a WBGSU, a WBGU member card. So right keep that in mind as well. And as Jane mentioned, that's good for two for one dining at restaurants all over Northwest Ohio and of course other family friendly activities as well so it's a really great thing. Keep in mind too that along with this as a WBGU member you get our monthly preview guide which has some kind of neat little stories in it also has uh, the, the, the program schedule so you make sure you don't miss your favorite program. Uh, keep in mind of course people have been asking Downton Abbey yep gonna be mm -hmm. coming back like it always does so another season of that but of course you can find all the other great programs as well so the preview guide is a nice little piece too as a member of WBGU TV that you get every month. Now, I guess we're going to try the ribs here. Okay. We're going to try them. Yeah, we're going to try the ribs. I mean, they're going to be really good. The question is, once again, how do we do it gracefully without looking like a, uh, a complete, uh, you know, not a very easy, good looking eater? Mmm. Once again, very good. Very good. And they fall off the they, they they fall, fall off the bone. Yep, yep there's truth in advertising mm -hmm. and they're falling mm -hmm. off the bone ribs. They are good. And um, of course you saw when Eric was making those the various ingredients. So it has just a perfect taste. And of course, uh, they went through the process of you know doing the, the brushing and all of that and it came out just perfectly uh, perfectly okay. tasteful, tender, good. falling off the bone. Um, I could make a complete mess of myself here if I kept eating them, but I won't subject you to that. <laughs> so uh, keep in mind, again, we do need your support for programs like WBGU Cook. So, Jane, if you could go through the, uh, I will. the thank you gifts and the pledge amounts. I will. And for a gift of $40, you get the recipe card. It's a series of cards, excuse me, okay. that um, show a lot of different recipes that I think you'll enjoy making. And then for a gift of $60, you get the recipe cards and the tailgating cookbook, which has a lot of uh, local uh, recipes in it and people that I know. It was yeah, kind of exactly, fun to look yeah. through. There. If you look for some of the towns, you're going to find somebody mm -hmm. in your neighborhood probably who submitted a recipe, if not to tailgating to one of our other exactly. cookbooks as well. And so then for a gift of $100, you get the recipe book and the member card. And this is mm -hmm. kind of unique and, and yes. a lot of benefits that go with this. Right. Two for one at area restaurants. Yep, and a lot of uh, family friendly activities mm -hmm. are involved in that and as all well. The, all the areas that uh, the mm -hmm. viewership uh, can exactly. access. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and keep in mind too that you get for $250 you get the 10 cookbooks and all of the other things that Everything. Jane just mentioned and every pledge of $100 and above receives a WBGU TV member card. Mm -hmm. So keep in mind that by, by pledging and receiving these thank you gifts you not only support WBGU Cooks but all the other programs you watch here on WBGU TV. So thanks for watching here on WBGU Cooks. We're going to go right back to the kitchen now where Tina and another great chef have another great recipe. So thanks for being here for Grub by Guys, WBGU Cooks. Welcome back to Grub by Guys. I'm here with Jason Hudson yep. with the Bowling Green Fire Department. So welcome, Jason. Appreciate you coming. Thanks for and having me. And you are going to make ma maple mustard glazed salmon. Yes, for us it's this a afternoon. it's a mouthful. Plus, plus some other little things that you brought here. So yes. why don't we go ahead and get started? I okay. know you have lots of little things yeah. to talk about here. Well, first, we'll just need a cookie sheet. Save your cookie sheet. Just use some foil. 
I learned that the hard way the first time. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's a good idea. Had to run to the store and replace a cookie sheet. Yes, I've done that several yeah. times. Yeah. And any salmon. This just happens to be uh, farm-raised Atlantic salmon. So you aren't particular on the salmon that nope. you... This has the skin on it. But these are salmon steaks. Fillets. fillets. These are fillets, steaks. right. Okay. And these are cut into about four-ounce fillets. Okay. Nice and pink. Mm-hmm. And you can, I mean, there's coho, there's king, there's um, Atlantic, there's... Uh, Chinook, so whatever, whatever your fancy is. Okay. Um, now, do you get to cook for all the guys at the fire department? Uh, every, yeah, we uh, we rotate. Okay. Uh, depends on whoever says, "Hey, who wants to be on on dinner?" Uh, whoever starts the conversation is pretty much tag you're in. Um, but yeah, we uh, we kind of rotate. Um, and is it we'll do you have, have to cook? How much do you have to cook a lot? For um, it depends what station you're at. Okay. The main station across the street from the university, we have eight. Um, okay. As a minimum, and then we have a second station on the west side of town has four. Okay, so that's um, not just like cooking for your family. Yeah, I guess. yeah, and that's all it is. It's an extension of, of the family. <laughs> that's true. So to make the uh, maple mustard glaze, we have uh, uh, maple syrup. Uh, you can use any variety of syrup. Okay. Um, and we have a quarter cup, mm -hmm. and then we're going to add to it two tablespoons of light brown sugar, not okay. dark. Okay, not the dark stuff. Nope. Okay. Just add it right to it, and then we're going to add three tablespoons of a um, coarse grain mustard. This is um, like a spicy brown. Okay, but uh, I've there's used, lots of different yes. kinds of mustards. And yes. if you're not a mustard fan, you're not always sure what to get when you're right. cooking and like this. Yeah, just not so this the is yellow. this spicy brown. Right, right. It just has some of the grain still in it. Now they make, they do make some that have um, the real coarse grains. Uh -huh. And I've used that once where it's like a, like a garlic, garlic based. Oh, okay. Um, mm -hmm. And where it still has the mustard seed okay. in it, like mm -hmm. real, I mean, real, real coarse. So you're crunching down mm -hmm. on it. And that's real, real good. If you like mustard. If right? you like mustard. <laughs> and once now you this get, kind of mustard's okay. It's the yellow. Yeah, that I'm not yeah, a fan and don't of. use the yellow. It's a bit. There's a big difference. Big difference. Yeah. Uh, once you get it mixed up, we're just going to uh, drizzle it over each fillet. Now this cooks in the oven, right? Yep. Not on the grill. Nope, not in, yeah, in the oven, 350, you know, about uh, 15, 20 minutes. Now we were talking earlier, salmon is one of those things you don't want to overcook. No, it turns, and, uh, and it how turns do you, pretty tough. Is there a way for you yeah, to? Yeah, you can, if you want to check it, um, just take a fork, put it in, and if it twists nice, nice and neat and it's, uh, and it, it's still, obviously, it's not going to lose its color. It's right. still going to be pink. Which is probably different right. when you're cooking other right. kinds of meats. Yep, so it's, it's still going to be pink, but uh, you'll, uh, you'll see a lot, some of the fat will, will start to, uh, uh, to bubble up. But uh, just put a fork in it and do a little slight uh, twist, and it'll just flake right up, right? And sometimes uh, if, you, if you do flake it up, you'll still see the color that you're seeing here deep down. If you see that, put it in for a couple more minutes. Okay, all right. So we'll put this in the oven. 350, eh, about 15 minutes or so. Smells good already. And what I like to pair it with is um, uh, roasted red uh, potatoes. We'll just add to. And you're not peeling, you don't nope, peel those no. yet? Red potatoes are great because they're you small. <laughs> you don't have to peel them. Plus with these big paws. <laughs> You do more harm than uh, than good, but I roast them. I roast them in a pan with some uh, olive oil and uh, throw some thyme on them. So how you just put them? You don't put those in the oven. You nope. just put those on. The, yep. How long do those have to cook? Until then? they're not, until they're to your uh, yeah, liking they, of yeah. tenderness. Some yep. people like them. Uh, some people like them mushy. I'm not one of those people. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I like uh, I like everything. Uh, uh, crisp, tender. So, have you always uh, been a cook? I, I, yeah, you I said like to. You enjoy cooking. Is I do. It, is I like that something to. Something that as a kid you. Uh, yeah, um, I uh, I had the luxury of growing up with uh, um, all my uh, my grandparents, mm -hmm. and so watch you know you watch grandma, uh, both grandmas cook, yes. and then uh, uh, my mom was a stay-at-home mom, so. Oh, that's awesome. Um, she. Uh, 
she did you know a lot of cooking well i think it's great i i love uh, when guys that up. cook um my both my sons i think because i love to cook they have a love of cooking as well so i think it's it's great that you can that you do that you love it yeah it's always it nice is a to lot have of somebody fun cook for you <laughs> it is fun uh, the other thing I like to pair with it is asparagus. Uh, absolutely love asparagus. Um, when and, you and I was commenting, you you left it in the bowl, standing upright in yes, water. Yes, yes, that helps to uh, the uh, the heads of the asparagus will turn mushy first. Um, but uh, uh, in order to keep them um, uh, standing tall, dip, keep them in water, and that'll they'll keep them uh, they'll keep them crisp. And, uh, you say, and I didn't think about this till we were talking. That's the way they keep them in the grocery right. store. Right. They're yep. usually standing. And up. actually, if you if you do if you do get some that are um, that are loose, you can do just like what you do with celery. Dip it in water, and, and it'll and, though, and um, it should okay. and it should start uh, start to come back. So as we were talking, you shouldn't keep them in the plastic bag for a couple of days. No, you no, <laughs> no. Just like everything else, it yes, needs to breathe, yes. even though it's already <laughs> been even though it's already been picked. Um, the asparagus uh, when they cut it. Asparagus is very woody, um, and uh, just snap it. So you do because it, it says it says they say that there is a natural place that yep, it breaks. So exactly. Don't just what? don't just say yeah. You know what? That looks good and cut it off because you'll this. So is, you're going to hold it at both ends and right. it'll automatically yep, snap. Yep. It'll where find it that it'll find that happy place and just snap. This is extremely tough. It's like uh, it'll be like chewing on a piece of uh, tree bark. Okay, and and I think what the difference is if you look at where you you know. What, what you started with and what you end up, you always think, oh, I'm wasting, but it's not wasting if it's no. um, not edible. Right. <laughs> and we're just going to, we're just going to steam these and they don't take so long. So how long, those don't take long uh, at all? No. Uh, actually, when they change colors, you see they're a real light, mm -hmm. they're a real light green. Once they turn to a, uh, a deep green, they are done. Um, don't, uh, don't leave the room. You know what they say. Once you leave, once you leave, uh, once you leave a pot of you know a pot of water uh, going, <laughs> yes. you leave the room. It's going to start boiling over. Yeah. Same thing with asparagus. You throw it in. You leave the room. You come back. It's overdone. So do you uh, season them? Any? I don't. Um, Just leave them as. Yeah. Sometimes uh, I've we've made uh, a hollandaise sauce mm, yeah. to go over it, um, but not this time. Yeah, you can't beat that. No, that it's very good. Anything that rich is. Is, is good. Oh yeah. And then just cover it and let her. Uh, so how long, about how long do you think it oh, normally? Oh, I'd say, I'd, they're already starting, they're already starting to turn. I would say uh, three, five minutes. Oh, and then, that's. Yeah, and then they'll be done. Uh, the potatoes will obviously take longer. Um, so you have three to five minutes on the veggies, the potatoes. Yeah, you can say, uh, if, you, if you start them, that takes about 15 minutes. If you were to, uh -huh. after you put the mm -hmm. salmon in the oven, you started the, uh, uh, the potatoes, I'd say the potatoes will be done. So that's a pretty quick meal, yeah. a very nice mm -hmm. meal that you can be done probably yes. within a half hour. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. And you put, all, it was olive oil and thyme. Olive that, oil and thyme. Hmm. What, why is that it just just has a real nice smell no garlic no, no. I, we love garlic but uh, uh, we didn't uh, you could put garlic in there if you mm -hmm. liked um, garlic goes great with anything yes um, it does and uh, and it smells wonderful as oh well, yeah just like yes. the time and yep. now did you you didn't use fresh but fresh time no you can use fresh depending yep. on what time of year Right. Would be good no to pun use. intended on with the time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that um, was a joke. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the uh, um, when it, when you're using um, dry or fresh, mm -hmm. you don't use the same amount. That, uh, that's a good point. Because of uh, the dry is a lot more potent. Very um, good. And uh, so you know, it just I, I didn't even measure it. You just sprinkle just it until it uh, until it looks good. Um, I don't think you can. Okay. Well, why don't we go ahead? I know you've you've gotten some salmon yep. that's already done. Yep. So why don't we get that out okay. and we can show? We have a plate here that we're gonna go ahead and put. It looks awesome. Nice glaze. That's why it's glazed, right? It's that's right. How nice that's that right. Looks. We just need to. Why don't a, I put that right there? Okay. Put that right and there. And you can see that's why if you. Yep. Oops. Actually. If you put your Here, I'll let you yep, do it. put your spatula right oh, between yep, the meat, it does take off. The it'll take the skin right off. Hmm. And Another that's why. Good tip. That's why you use a piece of foil. Why don't you? Let's get a couple of asparagus and some. Okay. And we'll make a nice little uh, 
played here. So Jason, thank you so much. We appreciate oh, yes. you spending some time with us here, some time this, with us <laughs> here this afternoon. And uh, we appreciate all that you do being a fireman here at Bowling Green. Um, and this, oh, the smell is awesome. So there we go. Isn't there you that go. look awesome? You got your salmon, your asparagus, and then your um, roasted Everything roasted right there within, potatoes. you know, 30 minutes. Yep. So stay with us and we will come back to another exciting recipe. And we'll be right back to the kitchen with Tina and another great chef here in just a moment. We want to thank you for joining us for WBGU Cook's Grub by Guys. And this is kind of an unusual show because typically, for whatever reason, we've always mainly had women who are cooking. So this time we decided to go with guys cooking. And you can see the recipes so far have been right on. And we can hardly wait to try this, uh, this glazed salmon with the asparagus and the potatoes. And we'll be talking more about all the different recipes that are on today's program and recipes from other shows that we've done in the WBGU Cook series. But of course, Producing programs like this does cost a little bit of money, and you can help support programs like WBGU Cooks and the other programs here on WBGU TV by uh, participating and pledging. And for that, there are some wonderful thank you gifts, Jane. There are wonderful thank you gifts, Steve. Uh, for a gift of $40, you get a recipe card set, and then a lot of good recipes there. And then uh, for a gift of $60, you get the recipe cards and the book, the cookbook. And then for a gift of $100, you get the recipes, the books, the membership card, which this is really valuable. Right. This is uh, mm -hmm. many uh, restaurants in the area have incentives in here, and you use your recipe card or your member card for member that. Card. Sure. Yeah, it's two for one dining, and of course, uh, again, all over Northwest Ohio, some in Michigan, some a little over in Indiana. So the whole region kind exactly. of you can, you can try out exactly. some different restaurants as part of that. Uh, keep in mind too that. Uh, we also have uh, multiple cookbooks from all the different WBGU Cook shows. And if you get pledged $250, you get all of the things that Jane mentioned before that, plus That's 10 it. of the WBGU Cooks cookbooks, everything from totally tailgating to chef's creations right to all different kinds of uh, things we've done, delicious, delightful desserts that kind of thing. So that's the way you can help support programs like WBGU Cooks and all the other great programming here on WBGU TV. And keep in mind that uh, your participation allows us to continue to produce local programs like this one, like Scenic Stops, Northwest Ohio Journal, uh, BG on TV. So your support really helps with those kind of local programs that really talk about the people and the places and the things of Northwest Ohio in the neighborhood where you live. And of course, one of the things we're gonna do is try this wonderful salmon here in just a moment but keep in mind with the cookbooks you get recipes from your neighbors exactly. from all the different towns and places around Northwest Ohio so those kind of support through the thank you gifts really make a big difference and plus you'll kind of get a little bit of taste of culture from all over Northwest Ohio recipes Represented. you may have thought about trying and now you can have someone exactly. says look these actually work you're not experimenting things work really well so let's talk again about the uh, the thank you gifts that people need to help support the program here yes there's many incentives and for a pledge of four $40, you get the recipe cards, and for a, a pledge of $100, you get a recipe book, um, the recipe, the book, the membership card, which is this, and it's all the right. different mm -hmm. restaurants are reflected in here from the area. And then for a gift of $250, you get all 10 cookbooks. Right. So yeah, you've really have, got a range yeah, of Yeah, there's choices. 10 cookbooks that look an awful lot like this one. Some of them are different styles. Some of them have like a three ring binder. Some of them the comb binding. Mm -hmm. But of course, again, contain recipes from all your friends and neighbors from all Lots over of Northwest Ohio. Lots of names we know in here. And, and recipes, everything from entrees, desserts, appetizers, you name it. So you can really have, a, if, you're, if you're into cooking or just want to try cooking, the cookbooks are great because they're simple, easy to do recipes that even, you know, guys can do. So keep in mind that's way you can support the program here and again all of your dollars go to support the programs you see on WBGU TV again whether they're the national programs like Anova, Frontline, Nature, Antiques Roadshow, Independent Lens, uh, the Masterpiece Classic, Masterpiece Contemporary Series like Downton Abbey which of course uh, if you're getting your uh, preview guide which comes as part of your membership you notice that uh, coming up is shortly we're going to have some other programs Downton Abbey every year comes so back and there's always favorite, great Downton favorite. Abbey programming going on. Now we're going to be trying this wonderful glazed salmon in just a moment, but keep in mind programs like WBGU Cooks and all the other programs you see here on WBGU TV do need support. So please go to your phone at 1-800-410-2727 and uh, pledge the various levels of thank you gifts that Jane has talked about 
or you can go online also at WBGU.org. So we're going to try this. Keep in mind, of course, that we really do need your support for all of the programs here on WBGU TV, and especially WBGU Cook. So let's try the salmon right here. This is this Gladly. is glazed salmon. We've got asparagus. We've got potatoes. It was a complete meal, and you saw us do it in about 10 or 15 minutes. Now, really, it took about, he said, what, about 25 minutes to do all of this. It's amazing. So this it's is a whole a meal, meal in a so short period of time. We're going to try this. Oh, is that good? So we'll be going right back to the kitchen in just a moment here on WBGU Cooks. So stick around for another great recipe. Welcome back to WBGU Cooks Grub by Guys. I'd like to welcome Jim Elsasser. He's with uh, BGSU Athletic Department, and I appreciate you coming today, Jim. Thank you. I'm glad and, to be here. And you are going to make your famous sloppy joes. I am going to make sloppy joes. Which is right an now. awesome guy food. It is. I mean, let's face it, tailgating or just, you know, on a Saturday night or Friday night or whatever. So why don't we go ahead and get started? Sure. You let us know how, how you made your All right. sloppy joes. Okay, so uh, yeah, this is a this is a fantastic comfort food for Absolutely. any night tailgate, yeah. whatever. So, what I've started with is really just two pounds of ground beef and uh, some onion. I sautéed the onion with a little olive oil okay. and then added the ground beef. Oh, so I'm just going to get it. olive oil into that. Huh? I'm just going to get it going right here to warm it up. And then make it sure it was uh, drained very drained, well. Drained, drained. A little fat's good though because yeah, it's, it makes it gives it some flavor. Gives it some flavor. Just when it's dripping in grease, that's probably not. And, you, and it was just hamburger and just a, onion, no correct. green pepper or anything else. You, you know, some, you could add some yeah, green some pepper people. in to give a little color, a little more vegetable, mm -hmm. which Get sometimes I prefer to. that, but the kids don't like that. Oh, yeah. Even cooked, huh? Even no. cooked, yep. So we'll just go ahead and uh, get the ground beef warmed up here. So you work over in athletics. I do. Here on campus. I do. And you're pretty much in charge of getting the game going, right? Right. Everything facilities, game operations falls within uh, my world, which... Thankfully, I have a, a good quality team behind us that uh, yes. it's not just a one-person event putting everything on. There's, and it's everything. It's not there's just everything. football. It's, it's everything. Everything that happens in Stroh, Ice Arena. Yeah. So everything that happens on Well, that's got to be a fun, if you're, especially if you're into sports, right? It's, it's fun it's, and it's exciting, but it's a, it's a lot of time and a lot of commitment, but that's what athletics is all about. So how do you have time to cook then if you're busy over with a BGSU athletics. Well, <laughs> thankfully I have a wife that likes to cook as well, that's so good. I can just kind of fill in and pitch in when when uh, there's a need and or that's if awesome I just have a, if there's that. an if there's an open Saturday that I can do something as well, so. So you do like to cook then. It's I do it, enjoy is cooking. Is it forced or you do like to cook? I enjoy are cooking. You, okay. yeah. Grilling, are you a grilling oh, I love, kind I of I love grilling. You're, yeah, you're grilling is one of the fun fun things. So, yeah. now that we've got our ground beef going here. I'm going to uh, add the next couple ingredients mm -hmm. and uh, we have a half a cup of brown sugar. We're just going to go ahead and add that in, break that up. Got to add that brown sugar. Brown sugar gives it that nice brown yeah. color and a nice sugary taste. Yes, you've got to have that We sugar. have a half a cup of ketchup. We'll go ahead and mix that in as well. It's smelling awesome. It does. Th the thing about television, you can see it, but you can't, you can't smell, smell it. it. Half the time it's the smell that... <clears throat> So yeah, the new Stroh Center, it's yeah. not so new, new anymore. No, it's but three years. It's three, three years, years old three years already. already. Wow. And it's been a fantastic facility yeah, for it's not just athletics, but the campus as a whole. It's that kind of front porch to coming into campus off of the interstate and I-75. Yeah, and there's actually concerts and things. That, that there's other events. Oh that yeah, there's, there. there's been all sorts of concerts, student activity concerts and family shows and globetrotters and all that fun stuff. So it's been great. So you'd recommend people come out and check I'd out BGS? I'd recommend definitely people come out and check BGSU out the show athletics. athletics and yeah. everything. Well, good. Yeah, because it's a fun, we, we like to go to the football games and we go to the basketball games and it's a, it's a great facility. You can see the game from pretty much anywhere that you sit. And the, the thing that people might not realize is we're in charge of the video boards. That's right. We have a great partnership with WBGU. Yes, we do. providing all the feed for the video boards, both at uh, the stadium and at Stroh. And when you Stroh. guys do a fantastic job for us. Yeah, and, and it gives our students, we have students that work here at WBGU TV, and um, they love being down on the field and getting the fan experience. That's a lot of, of what they do is 
get the fan experience. We're in charge of the replay as well. So um, it, it, it is a great partnership. It is a fantastic partnership. You guys do a wonderful job. Well, we, we thank you very much for saying that. We, All right, we well, let's get our one last ingredient one in last here. One last, only, we'll th wait, that's the other thing. It's not many ingredients. Not many ingredients at all. That's so awesome. <clears throat> the last is just a can of tomato soup. We'll get that in there. We'll continue a couple more. And do you let this simmer a while? I will, or I will let it simmer uh, just so it kind of cooks out and the, the flavors all marinate together and all that good stuff. Yeah, sometimes Sloppy Joes are almost better the next day. They you are. Know? I, <laughs> I, I, enjoy, I enjoy them just as much the next day, and reheated the, in the microwave. And, and the funny thing about Sloppy Joes, it's one of those you can add so many different ingredients. I mean, this was a very simple, you know, the, the brown sugar is going to make it for right. me. But, you know, I've seen recipes where there's vinegar added, or I even have a recipe that calls for chicken gumbo soup. Really? When actually I think what it is, is um, it makes it go further. It, it came from a family recipe that had like 10 kids. And so if you had something like this and then added this chicken gumbo, I think it just makes it go further. Right. And, and, and less meat, you know, if you wanted right. to have less meat. And again, whatever. we talked about adding green pepper in there or something else to give a little more color, a little more flavor, and that's, that's always still, a, a great is, option. But still, this is a very simple recipe, but I'm sure it's going to be awesome. So why very don't we simple. go ahead and... So yeah, we've got... Uh, got some that's we've already... Got some yeah, there is a go. difference. It did thicken it up. It did thicken up, and it, uh, it did give us a little... little yeah, it gives it a little bit more color, the deep, rich color. And it looks awesome and it smells even better. And sometimes what I like to do too is put a little shot of mustard on there just for a little oh, extra flavor okay. kick. So awesome. And there's our sloppy Joes. And I'm glad I don't have to try these. I would love to try them, but you know, sloppy. They're sloppy. sloppy. They're I didn't bring any napkins. <laughs> That's all right. Well, Jim, thank you so much. You're we welcome. appreciate you coming here today. Glad and to be here. make sure you head out to BGS, yes. CB, BGSU Come see us. Athletics, and um, you can see Jim and talk to him about his sloppy Joe recipe. All right. <laughs> Thanks, very good. Jim. Thank appreciate you very much. it. And we'll be back to the kitchen with Tina and another great recipe and cook in just a moment here on. Grub by Guys, WBGU Cooks. And of course, in a moment, we're going to try out Mom's Sloppy Joes. These Looks look really good. good. They smell incredibly good. But uh, one of the things that we need, of course, too, for you to participate as well is to help support programs like WBGU Cooks and the other programs you see on WBGU TV Public Television. And we have some kind of neat thank you gifts if you want to pledge support for the programs. Jane? Exactly. Well, for a mere gift of $40, you get a recipe a series of recipe cards that really are some great recipes there. And then for a gift of $60, you get the recipe cards and you get this tailgating book, which has a lot of great recipes from the local area. And then for a gift of $100, you get the recipe book and the member card, which is a really nice benefit with a lot of local establishments in the area and discount prices. And then for a gift of $250, you get 10 cookbooks mm -hmm. and all of the above. So really nice benefits to go along with your gift to public right. television. And, and all of those, uh, those pledges toward that uh, it goes to support all the programs like WBGU Cooks, Scenic Stops, Nova, Nature Bruce, all of those programs cost us money to provide to you. And keep in mind, too, that every pledge of $100 or more, you receive the WBGU PBS member card as well. And as you mentioned, exactly. uh, nice two for one dining at places all over Northwest Ohio. Lots of family friendly activities there as well. So, kind of a nice little benefit besides supporting the programming here, uh, getting the cookbooks, those sort of things. It, of course, gives you an opportunity to try some of the uh, local cuisine and activities all around the area. And, uh, you know, keep in mind too that uh, your money does support programs like this and, of course, all the other things that we do here on WBGU TV. Now, we're going to try the food here. Now, the trick here will be <laughs> eating a sloppy joe without letting the sloppy part come into play, right? So we're going to give right. this a try here. Now, the nice thing is we have these wonderful little scoops here, right, and uh, along the plate. So should some of the sloppy joe not make it to the correct location, we can always use this to kind of like scrape it off. Try. We're going to so try. We're going to try. We're going to try. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to you take a bite, right, and I'll, I'll talk while you're doing that. And as you can see, Jane has not spilled a bit, well, just a little bit. That's why we have the scoops right mm -hmm. here to take care of that. So what do you think? Excellent. Yeah, it was really good. When they were Excellent. cooking it, the smells was really, it was really nice. It's comfort food. Yeah, and the nice thing about it was, and I noticed that several of the recipes as we're going along, guys seem to like to put a little brown sugar in everything. So mm -hmm. that must be the key to a guy's recipe is put some brown sugar in there. So I'm going to try it right here too. I'll see if I yeah, can do as well as you did without spilling very much. Northwest Ohio good food. Mm. Very, very good. And keep in mind, the recipes are part of the uh, thank you gift as well. 
This is really good. <laughs> this is very good. Yeah. Very I was good. tempted to eat this Saturday with night food. I was tempted to eat this with a fork, but that's probably not really appropriate to no, eat a sloppy no, joe with a fork. No, but it's, uh, it's all, I think, uh, sloppy joes are what we've all been right. raised that's on, right. don't you think? That's right. So, once again, if you want to support programs like WBGU Cooks, whether it's Grub by Guys or some of the other programs, because of course some of the recipe books you'll get will come from our other programs. So you can do that very simply. We have a great array of thank you gifts. So Jane, exactly. if you want to remind people of I'm, what those are again. I will remind. Um, for $40 you get the recipe cards and there's a series of those there. And there's a lot of good recipes there. And then for a gift of $60 you get the tailgating book of recipes and the cards as well. And then for a gift of $100, you get uh, the recipe card, the book, and the membership card, which allows you to get discounts in uh, many values there on local establishments. And then for a gift of $250, you get the 10 cookbooks and all of the above. So that's really a nice array of, of items you get with your giving to the public television. Absolutely. And the recipes in the cookbooks are from uh, people all over Northwest Ohio, Southeast Michigan, parts of Indiana. So you can kind of sample recipes from some of your neighbors, uh, somebody in the next county, the next town, that sort of thing. So it's kind of a way to kind of sample the culture of the area, mm -hmm. you know, good home cooked made recipes. And of course, they run the gamut from appetizers, desserts, mm -hmm. entrees, you name it, comfort food like this, about anything you would like to try food. cooking. Absolutely. Tailgating. So We've got a lot of items that's all here. Part, that's all part of this. So keep in mind that, of course, we're going to be going back to the kitchen in just a moment for another great recipe and another great to cook to prepare more meals. But again, please take advantage. Go to your phones at 1-800-410-2727 or online at WBGU.org to support programs like WBGU Cooks, as well as all the other great programs here on WBGU TV. So let's go back to the kitchen and see what Tina has ready for us next. Welcome back. We're glad you're joining us today for Grub by Guys. And I'm joined right now with Brian Keegan. He's with Old City Prime in Lima, Ohio. Welcome, Brian. No, so glad you. you could join us. Pleasure. And you are going to be cooking chicken a la alba. Chicken a la alba, yes. And alba is? Alba is a small town in, uh, I think it's the Piedmont district of northern Italy. Oh, okay. Many so years ago, I worked for a woman in my hometown who was from Italy and was a war bride and came over here and she opened a restaurant back in the early 70s and this was one of her signature dishes. Oh, cool. So, like most cooks, I robbed the recipe from another good Absolutely. cook. Absolutely. Well, that's why we do it. this, so yeah. that people can rob recipes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so it's become kind of my signature dish. I guess I've been making this since about 75. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, w it looks like we have some nice ingredients here. You have yeah. some chicken that you've uh, pounded out already. Yes, that's exactly. Well, we take, start with a regular chicken breast, boneless, skinless, or whatever. You could use veal or pork for this dish also. And <clears throat> you pound it out to make it a kind of a scallopini. And so, you know, started with a breast about yay thick, now it's about half inch. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to put it in the flour. Mm -hmm. We're going to in the milk to make kind of a glue. And then the seasoned breadcrumb. And then we're going to saute it in uh, the skillet with a little olive oil. Now back to the <coughs> pounding this, we were talking earlier, you know, some people just slice them horizontally yeah, to make them thin. But there's a reason that you like to use your... Yeah. My mallet. Your utensil. Yeah, it's my, it's my, <laughs> well, the spiky side is for doing two things. It's pounding down, but it also tenderizes. Okay. Puts a little air in there, little air pockets, and then you flip this over and use the flat side to kind of smooth it out a little bit. And, one, and the, 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 the benefit this has over, say, slicing horizontal is that it makes it more tender and it'll cook about half the time. And you said this started out as a nice yeah, thick Yeah, it was a big piece fat, of, yeah, uh -huh. a big fat breast, and, a more, maybe an inch and a quarter thick. Okay, yeah. and, and you just put some like plastic wrap or saran wrap? Put it on the whatever. board, put some saran wrap. Because it'll get messy, I'm town. sure. Yeah. <laughs> Take out your frustration. <laughs> exactly, if you've had a bad day, this is a really good dish to make for dinner because it'll get your yellow. Well, I need to do bit. that because I always end up with the thick and then you're yeah. trying to get it not too done and yeah. you know, yeah. done enough. So that I'm gonna, I'm gonna definitely try that. Okay. So. so this will cook in just a couple minutes on the side. Which is an even, another nice thing is yeah, it does cook absolutely. a lot quicker. So if you're okay. making this for you know a little dinner party <coughs> you can get, do the cooking in you know 15 mm -hmm. minutes. Yeah, which minutes. is nice very mm -hmm. nice. Okay so we're gonna do so all do that. that. Yep, get go ahead. Okay mm -hmm. well very simply just regular old all-purpose flour and we need to just coat it nicely so that uh, when we get it in the milk the glue it's a little bit like library paste really. Yeah I hadn't heard Instead of it of called milk. glue before well, but yeah. it really does. That's what it is basically yeah. it's a glue. 
and we're going to shake that on, let that drip off a little bit. You always wonder why you're doing some of these things, <coughs> and then yep. you think, yep. well, you want your breadcrumbs to, to stay attached to the That's to the exactly meat. the point, point. and it liter literally is like a glue. And mm -hmm. uh, So let's make sure that we're nice and coated on all sides. That's pretty good. Yeah, it looks okay. good. And then simply, I've got this warmed up over here. I'm going to team, turn this up a little bit. And just to go back, this yeah. what, these were seasoned bread seasoned crumbs. Seasoned bread right? crumbs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you can make your own if you like. Uh -huh. I do that if I have time. Mm -hmm. I did not do that today, mm -hmm. but uh, Progresso yeah, or it's you know, use, house use brands at yeah. your mm -hmm. favorite Kroger mm -hmm. store or whatever. And you're putting the you're coating that pretty good down there. On you that want pan. the bottom of the pan to be really coated. And that's olive oil, right? This is olive oil. Mm -hmm. This is a nice little extra virgin olive oil, and it gives a little flavor to the dish too. And then we turn that up to the point where the, where the oil starts to shimmer a little bit and smoke, which won't take maybe a minute. It's already, you can see yep, already it's starting you can to. Start to see it's that. It's almost ready. So one of the things that you do at Old City Prime is oh. a wine steward. Well, that's my official position there is wine steward. Okay, yes. and yeah. that means? Well, I built a wine list last year before we opened. Okay. Uh, of course, I had to do all the research on that, which was, you know, terribly difficult. <laughs> you and got to research taste, research taste. Yeah, we probably sampled 500 wines Ooh. and we ended up with 75 on the wine wow. list. Wow, yeah. wow. And then maintain the cellar and then bring in new products as they come along and it seems like a good idea. We just revised the wine list again about a month ago. There's so many wines, we were just talking about that earlier, that if you're not a, a wine person, you're not really sure where to even start when... Uh... Well, yeah. Well, you mentioned <laughs> that before we went on air. And so, Say you're interested in wine, but you don't know anything. What you ought to do is start with what kind of things appeal to you in terms of your own personal taste. I mean, if you mm -hmm. were, do you like sweet stuff? Mm -hmm. Do you like, do you eat desserts? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you like mm -hmm. things that are kind of sweet? Yes. Probably the way to start. Yes, because yes, yes. The, <laughs> I'm, the, way I, the way I put it to people is the first thing you taste as a human being is something sweet. <laughs> yeah. And, that, and that's really the first uh, part of your palate that develops mm -hmm. is the, what, that part that tastes sweet things. Okay. So why not start with a sweet wine and then work your way along. So go with something like a Riesling, a Gavers or okay. if you want to go real sweet, a Moscato, yeah. Moscato mm -hmm. Dosti, something mm -hmm. like that, a Malvasia. Those are all sweet wines that uh, appeal to the... Not so, yeah. yeah. The, those that are of us that are not used to the... I've, I've tried, my friend is a red wine and yeah. I just... Well, the red wine for most people... have gotten there. <laughs> yeah. For most people who don't drink Having, wine right. it tastes like medicine or yeah. something you know so why would I'm you take sure. and that's what i'm thinking why yeah. would, why would you drink sure. that god awful stuff <laughs> right but uh, well, the point is you've developed that part of your palate can become activated too okay. in time most right. people start with a sweet makes sense wine. but you know you you walk in we were talking about some of the stores that specialize in wine and oh yeah you're not even if they they're helpful they will help you but you don't even know what you're supposed to be asking about so well that's true so if you go in there and you say well i'd, I'd like to try something sweet you know, and maybe mm -hmm. even modify your statement to mm -hmm. say, well, not too terribly right. sweet, but kind of on the sweet side. They will steer and you often, in the right direction. I think it's hard, too, to, to get something that if you have guests, you oh. know, you, what, I, what do you serve? What would be a good, you know, catch all, I guess, if that's a term. Yeah, if you have guests, you probably, my, my suggestion in that have case them is bring always, their own wine. Yeah, have them understand. <laughs> yeah, BYO. Or, uh, be, get a couple of wines. Get yeah. a sweet wine, or something on the sweet end, sweet white, and then maybe a drier red, or something in the middle like a Shiraz, a Syrah, okay. Petite Syrah. Those are red wines that also have kind of a fruit forward oh, character. Okay. They're not sweet exactly, but they're, you know. Appreciate that tip. Yeah. And this looks, I mean, look at that color. Yeah, so that we want a nice awesome. golden color. And that was only, what, a minute? Yeah, about two minutes yeah, on the side. Yeah, two minutes. Yeah, wow. about two minutes. Okay, so then we're going to look at the bottom. We're almost there. That, that this, smells awesome. What we do with this next is we're going to cover it over with these mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Now, the mushrooms I prepared ahead of time, they're cooked with a little olive oil, chopped shallot, and red wine. Oh, okay. And you just put the shallots in the oil, let them go, put the mushrooms in. Let them brown a little bit, drop the wine in, and reduce, simmer and reduce it until all the liquid is cooked away. You said away. maybe about 45 minutes, It takes possibly. about 30 to yeah. 45 minutes to make that, yes. And then there, the other ingredient that goes on top is the roasted red pepper. And the roasted red peppers, if you're doing your, I mean, you can go out and buy some, mm -hmm. you know, in, in your favorite store. Uh, but you made your own. Yeah, and, and there's two ways to do that. One is you can put them in the oven at about 400 degrees. And uh, maybe, and I usually rub a little olive oil on the outside, and then it takes about 40 to 45 minutes for those to roast. Mm -hmm. And then. So you said this is olive oil. It looks like there's some maybe. Uh, well, what happens with the red peppers is they're full of water. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you rub them on the outside with the olive oil, and then when they're roasted, you put them in a paper bag, 
and then the skins pull, just fall right off. Is and there some seasoning in there as nope, well? No, there's or? no seasoning oh, okay. at all. It's just the pepper itself. The black oh, marks are oh, just the, the char from, okay. being ru from the roasting. Okay. Okay, and uh, that's it. But that, take, that takes quite a while. And uh, you know, the cheating way, or the easy way, rather, would be to just go to you know your favorite store and buy some in a jar. But the thing with that it looks different from the ones you buy in the jar is not so greasy. Yeah, and you, yeah. You the know what I yeah, mean? Sometimes true. they look like I mean yeah. I guess they are s setting in oil, right? Well, the sometimes yes, sometimes no. But they bleed like crazy, especially after they roast the water that oozes out of them. These were perfectly dry and padded off when I okay. put them in this little yeah. tub. And by they've, the time yeah, I got here, they yeah, had bled out all that yeah, liquid. Yeah. Yep. So they just keep bleeding. I don't know, they're like the hemophiliacs <laughs> of the vegetable <laughs> kingdom or something. And finally, we put a uh, couple of slices of provolone cheese on top of the whole thing. And then we're going to put that in the oven for about 10 minutes or so at a 325 degree oven until the cheese melts and bubbles all over. And we have one of those already finished we do. if you want to get that out and show the folks at home. I wish you could smell this. This smells absolutely <clears throat> wonderful. And, and the, the thing I love about this recipe, it's pretty simple. And there's, I mean, that's oh, what we get, there's our finished product. That there. looks absolutely awesome. And so when I'm having a dinner party and I'm making this, I will serve this with a little saffron risotto and a green vegetable, like a broccoli rib or maybe broccolini or something like that, sauteed with a little garlic and olive oil. And wow. it's a nice presentation. It's very Italian because you have the white, the green, and the red. Yeah, that, that is awesome. Mm. Well, Brian, thank you so much. We really appreciate <laughs> you pleasure. joining us today. This is going to be one of my recipes that I'm going to claim as my own now. <laughs> I How think you should. <laughs> yes. Yes. So thank you so much for joining us, and uh, we hope to see you soon. Thank you again for being with us here on WBGU Cooks, Grub by Guys. And uh, we're going to be sampling this wonderful chicken a la alba in just a, a couple of moments. But we'd like to remind you, of course, of, of the, the other recipes that have been on the program. First of all, we started off with falling off the bone baby back ribs. Then we did maple mustard glazed salmon, followed by mom's sloppy joes. And then, of course, we finished up with the chicken a la alba. So uh, all wonderful recipes. All of them, and, and to tell all you the truth, them. we're really, I'm kind of full now because we sample this. And of course, I sample a little more than I probably should. But uh, the food's all been oh. wonderful. And of course, all of the recipes were it looked very easy to make. I mean, each of the chefs did a really They're nice doable. job of saying. They're doable, yeah, all of yeah. them. Yeah, even people who might not be really cooking a lot could say, oh, well, I can do that. And it comes out, hopefully it comes out looking as exactly. good as this. This is pretty. Uh, yeah, very. and everything looks good and it tastes good. So uh, keep in mind, too, that uh, a program like W. WBGU Cooks does need your support just like all of the programs we do here at WBGU TV. So uh, keep in mind by pledging, going to your phone at 1-800-410-2727 or going to WBGU.org, you can support programs like WBGU Cooks, uh, all of the children's programs like Sesame Street, Cat in the Hat knows a lot about that, Arthur, Dinosaur Train, Wild Kratz, um, all of those wonderful programs that are great family programs for not only you, but of course your children and uh, your grandparents, that sort of thing as well. And there's a way to support the programs. Jane, if you could kind of give folks an opportunity to see how they can support programs like WBGU Cooks. Gladly, I will. Um, for a gift of $40, you will get a Chef's Recipe Card, so a nice uh, mm -hmm. incentive there to yeah. make a gift of $40 to uh, public television. And then for a gift of $60, you'll get the recipe cards and then this tailgating uh, cookbook here. And then for a gift of $100, you get the, uh, the recipe book and a membership card. Right. And, and this is really valuable. It we is. We were looking through, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of great restaurants, lodging, that two-for-one mm -hmm. type yeah. deals. From all over all Northwest over, Ohio over. And, and actually in southeastern Michigan as well. So, exactly. I'm ready mm -hmm. to use my card here. Yeah. And then for a gift of two fifty, you get 10, po 10 cookbooks in all of the mm -hmm. above. So right. everything else and the 10 cookbooks. Right. And, and the 10 cookbooks, of course, cover everything you could possibly want in a meal, whether it's appetizers, desserts, pies, cakes, you name it, and all from your neighbors here exactly. in Northwest Ohio. Exactly, you'll see a lot of names Ohio. you know in there. Yeah, you're going to recognize towns say, oh, I know that person. Mm -hmm. They live, you know, they live a couple of miles away, that sort of thing. And keep in mind that every pledge of $100 and above receives a WBGU member card. And of course, as a member, you also get our preview guide every month. And that gives you kind of like neat little stories about some of our programs, things that we're doing, um, other events involving WBGU TV. And it also, of course, gives you the entire program schedule so you don't miss your favorite program here on WBGU TV. Now, we're going to try the chicken a la alba mm -hmm. here. And this time, they're going to allow All me right. to use a fork. You know, exactly. they, they, they know that I can't handle this now, typically. Um, so right. if you go ahead and I'll, well, it looks, this, as Tina has said when she's doing this cooking, 
It's too bad you can't smell what this stuff is like when it's cooking. It is just incredible how good it looks, how good it smells, and obviously how good it tastes. And oh. what I'm always amazed <laughs> is how it, how well it presents when it's done. I mean, there's a skill to that as well. Very, so, very good. Very that good. Is, so, that is really yeah. good. So keep in mind that the four recipes we talked about today, the falling off the bone baby back ribs, the maple mustard glazed salmon, mom's sloppy joes, and the chicken a la alba. And those recipes are all included in the recipe cards. And of course, if you participate at one of the thank you gift pledge levels, you get a lot of other great recipes that just about anybody can try. Uh, if, if I can do them, I'm pretty sure well, that I'm most with, people I'm can handle Steve, them. So. Uh, yeah. On that. So. Yeah, so uh, once again, uh, if you want to run through the uh, the thank you gifts for people. I gladly will, and you take yeah. a bite yeah, here. I'll do that and, while uh, you're doing that. For a gift of $40, you mm -hmm. will get uh, the Chef's Recipe Cards, and there's a series of those, and really a lot of nice recipes there. And then for a gift of $60 to public television, you'll get the Recipe Cards and the Tailgating Cookbook. And that has a lot of uh, nice recipes in it for tailgating or just Saturday nights at home. Right. And then for a gift of $100, you get the recipe cards, you get the membership cards, in, in membership card, and this is really valuable. This has a lot of local establishments all over Northwest Ohio, that right. two for one deals, lodging, restaurants. Uh, so I'm anxious to use my card and try some different places. Right. And then for a gift of 250, you get the 10 cookbooks and everything else that goes with it. So right. you get a nice assortment yeah, it's a, of things. It's a wonderful package, a lot of great yes. activities, great recipes you can try at home. So again, 1-800-410-2727 or go online at wbgu.org and support programs like WBGU Cooks and all the other great programs we have here on WBGUT Public Television for Northwest and West Central Ohio. And join us again soon for another edition of WBGU Cooks here on WBGU TV Public Television. Thank you.